to Kenya React is your boy Dixon. Today we're going to react to the ridiculously world of cat. So we want to see what is here. Here we go. The video was brought to you by Pure Spite. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. On a scale from one to ten, my friend, your fuck. This video exists for one reason, and it's because of an argument I got into with one of my friends, and even though Whoa. we technically settled it in the end, I'm still tight it even got to that point. And if this dress proved anything, it's that even the most intelligent forms of life in the world, or even the universe, can have the stupidest hills to die on. So because of that, and because of a certain comment I'm really tired of getting, I decided to take a two for one special on birds, with the one being a stone, and by stone, I of course mean YouTube video. But first, a word from our sponsor. There's no sponsors, but can we just agree that this thing is obviously white and gold? Like, y'all really be lying unprovoked for no reason. Well, get the f And speaking of color causing controversy, no racial, Black Panthers aren't real. They don't exist, and I very nearly lost a close friend because of it. Melanism's a mutation that causes the production of melanin to go into overdrive, leading to basically a real life shadow clone shiny Pokemon. A black panther is really just a leopard or jaguar with the same revitiligo Uncle Ruckus got. And because the gene that causes it is dominant in one cat but recessive in the other, most black panthers are just jaguars with extra tint. That's how a funeral colorway cat can birth a black and yellow remix. And vice versa. So black panther isn't really an animal, it's a description. It's a panther that's black. And I wish it ended there, but if it did, this video wouldn't exist. Because this is a black panther. But this is also a black panther. And wouldn't you know, there goes a blue panther. Since Black Panther just describes a mutation, black ain't the only color on the Panther palette. Lucism is like the sun-bleached cousin of melanism, so even though it sounds like a colonizer response to Wakanda, you can call both of these White Panthers. The Maltese Tiger is an alleged variant of the South China variety. It's not for sure that they exist, but if they do, they'd technically be Blue Panthers. By now, I'm guessing at least one person's commented, what about the Pink Panther? About that. Erythrism is the red-headed middle child of mutations, and one of the results of it is the ultra-rare strawberry-flavored leopard, or one could say, a pink panther. I can go on, but you see what I'm getting at, right? And at this point, you're probably asking, what even is a panther? The answer, well, the simplest one is that panther is just another word for big cat. It'd be simple if it wasn't for one big, big unintended problem. Here we have two cats. Cat A is an average of 130 to 140 pounds, stands two to three feet tall at the shoulders, and they max out about, uh, let's say, 220. The average cat B weighs in at a little over 100 pounds on a good day, just over two feet tall, and the biggest ones you'll ever see are pushing 120. But since the world of cats is honestly as defined as they are, only one of these is a big cat, and it's not cat A. And now you're probably questioning what big cat even means. And I'm so glad you asked, because now we get to meet him. The Big Cat Club is made of the Panthera, or, you know, the Panther genus. There's technically five members, and the first is the Leopard. The Leopard is the pound-for-pound -pound champion of Big Cats. And what would happen if Spider-Man <coughs> changed careers and paid rent as a hitman? You won't find five animals more disrespectfully athletic than the Leopard. There's not a single situation where a 360 backflip no-scope is required to murk a monkey. But that's just leopards. They're by far the best climbers of big cats. And to avoid getting food taxed by lions and hyenas, they'll manhandle their prey up into the trees off the muscle. Straight jaw work. No gym, but look at that deadlift. And yeah, that is a rhino. Yeah, that is a giraffe. Leopards can also stalk their prey from the trees and fall out the sky for smoke like Batman about a cripple a jaywalker. This assault squirrel on steroids is the reason why a sign like this even exists. Not just because an Olympic gymnast level serial killer can get airdropped to the back of your neck, but also because you can legitimately get life deprived by a leopard's leftovers. Leopards are by far the most versatile big cat, which is why they have the widest range. Just don't let Baboon Gang know, because that beef is anything but rare. Next are snow leopards, and this is going to be the beginning of many, many cat contradictions. Snow leopards aren't even leopards. Genetically, Tai Lung would have been closer to Tigris, and that's a shame because missing out on the name Cliff Tiger is a fumble. It's a scientifically proven fact that cats are whores for elevated surfaces. So the mountain tiger lives in God's attic in the Himalayas. So it's a good thing they either have zero fall damage or anime plot armor stronger than vibranium. Yeah, he survived this. It also gets cold up there, so the same tail they use for balance can also be used as a DIY scarf. I encourage you to go down the rabbit hole of snow leopards using their tails as security blankets. It'll make you feel as warm as they do. They've been nicknamed Ghost of the Mountains due to how far they've gone to social distance from humanity. But with how dirty we've done their closest cousin, I don't blame them. 
the actual tiger is like the Chuck Norris of cats because some of the facts about them, you'd swear they were a cryptid if they weren't on camera. Facts like their legs being so built, tigers can stand even after they fully pass tense. Or that the infrasound in their roar can temporarily paralyze prey. How about the fact that they're one of the most vengeful things on the planet, with one tiger crossing off 436 names off the census after she got crossed by one. How about the fact that the reason tigers are orange in the first place is because the animals on their grocery list are completely Helen Keller to the color. Meaning, if you're a deer, this is what the biggest cat in the world looks like. It's also why a tiger's stripes run skin deep. And out of all cats, tigers have by far the highest human body count. And that's mostly because of how close they live to humans. And I don't just mean in India. There's more tigers in America than in the rest of the world combined. This one's in Houston, but we've also screwed them more than any other cat. Most white tigers are literally a product of incest for human interest. Then you got probably the most famous big cat of all, the lion. They're the only ones that weaponize the power of friendship, which is why lions have the most impressive meal plan of any cat. Anything short of a full-grown elephant can get packed up by the pride. Not even elephants in general get immunity, but going for the high-risk, high-reward prey means lions also get bodied religiously. And not just in Detroit, arguably the biggest danger to a lion is their own ambition. But together, probably nothing's more impressive and makes you want to evacuate your bowels more than a pride of lions. And even with Hollywood dubbing over their roar with the tigers, it's cause a lion's roar is designed to be heard and tell anyone within a 5 mile radius that if they plan to f around, best make time to find out. And lastly is my personal favorite of the cats, the jaguar. Easily the one punch man of meat eaters, thanks to the pound for pound strongest jaws on a cat, and also their habit of taking Thanos' advice and going for the head. The end game there is, a cousin of the crocodile getting its wig busted by an all-terrain aquatic vice grip. It takes a lot to make a capybara feel anything that isn't apathy. Jaguars are also OP enough to hit a lick on a sea turtle. I don't know if this makes sense, but jaguars are the tiger sharks of big cats. Their name translates to he who kills with one leap. Because when this leopard on steroids gets active, the census undergoes subtractions. And I don't want to gloss over the fact that they're also the best swimmers of big cats. Although the Bengal tiger would probably like to have a word. Jaguars will often chew on yaji vines and get absolutely obliterated. <coughs> That has nothing to do with this video, but it's by far my favorite fact about them. So those are the five members of the Panthera genus, which makes them all Panthers. Old time, Jacksonville and Carolina flex the same mascot, which means any one of these cats being black would make it a Black Panther. Yes, even this. Now you might think that's where it ends, but call me Billy Mace, cause wait, there's more. Remember this? Well, Cat B is a male snow leopard, and Cat A is a mountain lion. The cat world is really just a bunch of rules and cats that break the rules because not only is a cat bigger than a big cat, somehow not a big cat, the cat 99% of people, including Google, think of when they hear panther isn't actually a panther. What the f Well, as mentioned, cougars don't sit at the big cat lunch table and it has nothing to do with weight class. Most experts agree that the defining trait of a big cat is a modified bone in the throat called the hyoid that gives the cat the ability to roar. So the rule of thumb is, if it roars, it's a big cat, and if it purrs, it's a little cat. Big quotes on the little. Now I gotta immediately break that rule because snow leopards, the big cat that's already on thin ice for not even being a leopard, also can't roar. What the f- Actually, it's gonna get old if I keep doing this, so you know what, I'm just gonna use Soldier Boy. Huh? Instead, they sound like if Lion King showed Simba's awkward oh. teen phase. <laughs> So recap, with cats, there's big cats and little cats, or more specifically, panthers and felines. Panthers from the panthera genus and felines from the feline subfamily. You see, now I always thought feline referred to anything cat, but by this logic, lions, tigers, and the rest of the big cats technically aren't felines. So any cat's either going to be a big cat pushing P, P being panther, or a little cat from family feline. And now I gotta break that rule, cuz this cat isn't either. The clouded leopard isn't a big cat or a little cat. You're probably gonna ask, well, do they roar or purr? No. <laughs> yeah, clouded leopards do neither, and they're considered the bridge between big cats and not big cats. They're also considered a modern day saber tooth. Not literally, but because of having the most disrespectful dental of any cat, relative to size. Speaking of size, I grew up thinking they were way bigger, but that's honestly because the first time I heard of one, it was trying to murk the Rugrats. Also, the clouded leopard isn't an actual leopard, and we can hold the soldier boy because at this point, we ain't even surprised. But yeah, other than them, cats are either big cats or not big cats. Which brings us to the cougar, who, despite being the most associated with the name, isn't even a type of panther. 
They're actually more related to your pet cat than to an actual lion. The confusion is because mountain lions can be found anywhere from the Yukon to the very tip of South America. Being found in a lot of places means they've gotten a lot of names like puma, cougar, yeah I've never heard of catamount, but also panther. I mean think about it, they're called mountain lions but share area codes with jaguars. And also they don't roar, instead they sound like a woman becoming a notch on Ted Bundy's belt. Basically cougars prove that you might be a big cat, but you're not a big cat. This roided up identity crisis might go by many names, but they catamount to a panther. And now that we've addressed that, we can address the second reason I'm making this video. Cheetahs control. Mm -hmm. I am weary. Yeah, cheetahs aren't big cats, and not only is it Avengers level conflict in my comments whenever I say otherwise, this was another argument me and my friends got into. But cheetahs are in subfamily feline, which makes them felines, which makes them not big cats. Also, they can't roar. The best they can do is arouse a party of bird watchers. Now you see why cheetahs get religiously bullied. It's basically an overgrown house cat competing with units. I've always said that the cheetah's biggest downfall was investing everything into speed, but honestly, evolving to run away from their problems was the best they could do. And I love cheetahs, but it's clear they took the cut way too far. Like I said, if you can get victimized by vultures, you messed up. In their defense, male cheetahs will form coalitions to tackle life head on. But cheetahs are still the most underappreciated single moms in nature. There's a lot more other little cats and some you've never heard of. Like you want to know what's the closest relative of the mountain lion? You'll never guess it. Here's an ad while you guess it. It's the Jaguarundi. So the cat named after a jaguar is most related to a cat named after a lion even though neither of them are related to either of those. Huh? Its name means dark jaguar, even though it looks like a UFO. Unidentified feline otter, which is actually another name they have. And they do not look happy about it. But nothing has more of an attitude aesthetic than Palace's cat. The cat that looks like the furry epitome of shit ain't funny. But if nature wanted me to take them seriously, it shouldn't have had them built like an ice chilled glacial Garfield. Like snow leopards, they'll also use their tails to stay warm. Except with the palace, that means standing on their tails to keep their paws toasty. You're not beating the adorable allegations, buddy. Now, they're still wild animals, so no, you can't have them as a pet. Or, I guess anything can be a pet until it rips your face off. But if it means anything, you can adopt a Siberian forest cat. Cause it's honestly the closest you're gonna get. But yeah, that's the aggro kitty. To be fair, you'd be pissed seven ways to Sunday if you googled ugly eared cat and your face came up. Now we've got the bobcat, and I'm gonna be honest, I could never really tell the difference between them and a lynx. But it turns out this whole time, a bobcat is a lynx. Or at least a type of it. The lynx is a cat with many faces, with four species of them in circulation. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here either. The Canada lynx is the most memorable, if for no reason, but the fact that they remind me of that one Proud Family episode. And the only thing goofier than their paw is how they settle disputes. And the lynx of the desert would have to be the Caracal. Caracal. Uh, Caracal. Or you might know him by his stage name, Floppa. Their defining trait is being one of the few creatures alive with an ear mullet. I say few because a river pig stole their entire flow. I can't really tell you for sure, but many believe that they use these ear tufts to catfish birds by pretending to be insects. Others say twitching the tufts is how caracals talk to each other. Also they have what's scientifically known as stupid bounce. They're a popular pet, which I don't really get because every video I see looks like a cat prepared to catch a charge. Turns out hissing is just how they communicate. They can hiss at you and be perfectly happy like only nature Sundere can. A close cousin of the caracal is the serval, and for them, all I gotta say is gravity is pretty much an option, especially since a bunch of their calories come from life retiring birds midair. Pogo Kitty can launch itself 13 feet, and if you're like me with no concept of distance, here's another video. Stupid, right? So we have cats in jungles, cats in deserts, cats in mountains, and now cats in air. So, so, so what's next, like cats in water? This is a fishing cat, not to be confused with the fisher cat, which wouldn't you know, isn't even a cat. Huh? It's pretty obvious where the fishing cat got its name, and it's one of the few cats that will 100% run your fade in water. And now we got the cats that you could put in a pet store and nobody would even blink. And this is the smallest cat of all, with the rusty spotted cat able to sleep comfortably in your hand. 
And yeah, that's not a kitten. That's a grown man with bills to pay. <laughs> not much bigger is the Blackfoot, aka the deadliest cat on the planet. They have the highest hunting success rate of any cat at 60%, and while hunting, they'll catch a body pretty much every hour on the hour just to stay alive. And they're the reason I could never be a cameraman. No shot I could see this and be expected to be professional, ain't no way. Yeah, looking real fierce, buddy. My timbers are shivered. Same thing with Joffrey's cat, a vicious, cold-blooded predator that only weighs at most 10 pounds. And at this point, you're probably wondering just how many cats are in South America. Well, here's three more. The Cod Cod, the Margay, and the Ocelot. I put them together because they look like three stages of the same Pokemon. And here you have the Andean Mountain Cat, which is endangered of being too damn adorable. Aww. Nah, but like for real, they are dying though. Speaking of which, we got the cats that are so rare, there's barely any videos of them I could use. There's the Borneo Bay Cat, or just Bay Cat for short, the Marbled Cat. Another one who could have lived anywhere, but instead chose the foothill forest of the Himalayas. You got the elusive Asian golden cat, and of course, the African golden cat. Can you tell I'm running out of things to say? There's just that many cats, and you can see exactly where we got tired of naming them. For example, this is a wild cat. Yeah, that's, that's their name. Because when a naming guy rage quits and you're left with his intern, this is the quality of work you get. This is a sand cat. It's like a feline fennec fox that runs fades with venomous snakes for fun. Two out of ten name, but at least they live in the sand. This is a jungle cat. Guess where they don't live? I'm not even gonna put this older boy this time. Are y'all trying to piss me off? Yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Not because I named every type of cat. There's like 40 of them. I'm just cutting it now. But yeah, this video was kind of just an excuse for me to talk about the cats of the world, so consider it a late Christmas gift. Friendly reminder that I am selling a calendar, link in description if you're interested. But anyway, make sure you drink water, cherish your loved ones. Thank you for the support in 2023, like for real. Shout out to my friends for inspiring and irritating me at the same time. And I'ma see y'all in the next year. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, See you in the next episode. Bye.